Today on The Joy of Editing, I want to show you the perfect trio, and that is Camera Raw Filters Lens Blur, Photoshop, and Gen Fill. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Today, I want to show you what I'm calling the perfect trio. And that is the new lens blur filter that you'll find in Lightroom. You'll find it in Camera Raw. You'll find it in the Camera Raw filter in Photoshop. Today, I want to show you it in the Camera Raw filter in Photoshop, how we can combine it with Gen Fill in Photoshop, and we'll get much better results than if we stuck to just the lens blur filter by itself. And you'll see what I mean here shortly. I recently published the video about the Lightroom Classic Lens Blur Early Access Filter. It was a first look video, and I was finding if you had some issues around your subject, to correct those with the focus and blur brushes can be quite difficult and sometimes impossible to correct. But I'll show you how we can overcome that in Photoshop using Gen Fill. Another area that's really impossible to fix is around the head of a person. If they have some flyaway hair, that's going to a lot of times get blurred and it's going to look very unnatural. But I'll show you how we can overcome that with Gen Fill in Photoshop. And the last thing I want to address is the fact that whenever you blur out a background, you're going to lose all grain that was in that background. And all images will have a little bit of grain, even if you do massive noise reduction. OK, you'll still see a little bit of grain, but I'll show you how we can add grain back using the uh, camera raw filter. Now you can also do this in Lightroom using masking, which is what I'll be doing here with the camera raw filter. Now I wanna be right up front with you. I did not come up with this on my own. I watched the Photoshop Summit, this year's Photoshop Summit, and I saw somebody doing this. I can't remember who it was. And I also saw a video by Pix and Perfect, which was working with something very similar as well. And then I'm going to show you my little uh, take on it, where I use Gen Field to help with the hair, the edges of the hair, as well as the Remove tool to help repair edges of subjects. All right, then let's get started. The first thing I want to do is duplicate the background layer. You can use a shortcut Command or Control J. That'll duplicate your background. Shut the uh, copy off. Just click the eye, that'll shut it off, and then make the background layer active. That's the first step. Next, what we'll do is select our subject. Now, I have different ways of selecting the subject. I have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, so I have this button here I could use. If you don't have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can come up here to Window and come down and check on Contextual Taskbar and then that will come up. Now you can move this taskbar around anywhere you want it, and I highly recommend that you click the three dots and click on pin that way it'll stay where you keep it and then you can click select subject and give it a second or two and your subject will be selected next we want to expand our selection because what i want to do is remove the subject from off this image and this is pretty cool and you'll see how great this works but let me go ahead and do that so to expand it we could click right here and you're going to find expand selection right here in the contextual taskbar if you have the tk9 plugin for photoshop there's a button right here you can use to expand but i'm going to expand mine 50 pixels now anywhere between 30 to 50 but on this image i think 50 pixels would be good so i'm going to click ok and you can see it's expanded now you can either click generative fill or if you have the tk gen fill panel which i highly recommend that you get because it's absolutely free i'll leave a link for it in the description below this video pick it up it's totally free and i have a bunch of videos about it on my youtube channel that you can check out you can either click generate here in the gen fill panel or you can use the contextual taskbar and click generative fill and then click generate it's only one button click with the gen fill panel so that saves you a little bit of time which is nice this takes about 10 seconds i'll pause the video and get right back and now we can see my subject is taken out of the image okay now you have three different choices here this is the first choice here's our second choice here's our third choice and they all look pretty good i think i'll just end up using the first choice right here now what's going to happen next is we're going to blur this rather than blurring the entire image with our subject in it which will go a long way in giving us a better result once we blur the background but what i want to do next is i just want to merge these two layers together so if you right click right here 
and go to merge down, you'll merge those two layers together. And now what I want to do is turn this into a smart object. Now, if you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this button right here and change it to a smart object, or you could right click in the image and find convert to smart object. But that's important. So this way we can go back and change things later if we're not happy with our lens blur adjustments. So now what we're going to do is launch our camera raw filter. If you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this button right here. Or if you don't, you can come up here to filter and find camera raw filter and click on that and that will launch your camera raw filter. Now you'll find the lens blur filter over on the right side over here under optics unless you've changed your setup here, but you'll find it near the bottom here. If it's not open, just click on Lens Blur and it opens up, and then just click the Apply button. Now Lens Blur will find the subject, but I recommend clicking this button. This way you can pick the area you want to be in focus, and I know my subject is sitting right here, and this area would be in focus, so I'm gonna click right here. And now what we can do is add more blur if we want to by adjusting the slider to the right. But the nice thing is we made this a smart object so we can come back here and change this anytime we want, which is really nice. And of course you can play with a bokeh here. You can get a different bokeh back here. Like they have five different bokehs you could use. Like if I click on this one, you can see the little dots here. And then you can adjust the amount of the bokeh or bokeh, however you like to say it. And basically what this does is lighten it up. And if you double click it, you'll set it back to defaults, but I'm gonna use the first one. This is the one I like to use. But you have five different choices, as I said. The camera raw filter has a way of adding grain, and we could do that very easily. And to do that, I'm gonna use a mask. So come up here to masking and click on the mask button. And all we need is a brush tool, so I'll click on the brush tool. I'm in the overlay mode, I have a red overlay, and all I'm going to do is just paint over the out of focus areas and stay away from the in focus areas. If I go a little bit over, it's not gonna hurt anything. You won't notice it. You can always grab an erase brush and adjust your brush size accordingly and erase an area if you went over too much. So you have that option as well. Now we need to add the grain. I'm gonna shut the overlay off and I'm gonna scroll down and you're gonna look for effects. You see effects right here. All right, and here's your grain adjustment right here. It's set at zero by default. I'm gonna hold my command or control key down and click the plus button a couple times to zoom in and what I'm looking for is an area in focus compared to an area out of focus now there's not much grain in this image and all I want to do here is add some grain so if I take this grain slider and drag it to the right can you see that grain I just need to add a little bit of grain because again as I said if you don't add any grain and I'm just going to do like a plus eight the image will look fake it because all the out of focus areas will be totally smooth and that won't look good, but that's really all I need. Next, I'll click this fit button to fit this to screen again, and then I'll click this button up here to go back to the develop panel. And just take a look at the image and I think everything's okay. Now you can also come and click right here on this triangle and you have your focus and blur brushes. You can add blur to any other areas or make any areas you feel should be sharp. So you can play with all that, but I think I'm okay. I don't have to touch that. And then also we have this focal range. So I can take this box here, we can move it around, but I use this tool to find the area I wanted in focus, which was like right around here. But I can take this left side and drag it to the left to make sure all this area will be in focus down here. Or I can narrow that range or I can widen it out this way. But I think I'm good. I'm going to click OK. And now here we are back in Photoshop. Now what I want to do is make my top layer active and then turn it on. And now we're seeing the original background layer. Okay. So the layer underneath it, if I shut this off, is the blurred layer. To make any layer an active layer, just click on that layer. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this top layer again. And now what I wanna do is select my subject. So we could come back to the contextual taskbar and click select subject again. And now my subject is selected. Now, if you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this button here and apply that mask right onto here. Or I can go ahead and click this button right here to add that selection as a mask. And now we can see the subject in focus and the in focus background has been masked out. Now what we can do is get yourself a brush, type your B key to get your brush tool and make sure the mask is active, click on the mask and make sure you have your white and black swatches here. If you don't, type your D key to get your default. 
what we want is white because what I want to do is bring the original image back in here. So watch, I'm going to paint across here at 100%. And you see that I bring the original image back. I don't want to go up into my blur area, but just right in this area right here. Right up to there. You see that? And that brings the original image back in. Now, if I disable this mask, and to do that, if you hold your shift key down and click in the mask, you can disable the mask, and then you can see there's the unblurred background. Hold your shift key down again and click on the mask, and there's your blur. And then if you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this X here to disable the mask and see the original image, and then click that X again, and now we can see the blurred background. Now what I want to do is zoom into the subject and check the edges of the mask just to see if I need to do any repair. Now, it looks not too bad. There's some areas up here that aren't real good, and this doesn't look natural right here, so here's what I'm going to do here. I'm gonna grab a lasso tool, so type L, and what I'll do is we want a lasso like right around this area, and I'm gonna come the whole way down into here and make it wider coming out into the blur area. And now, I'm gonna click on Generative Fill and click Generate. Okay, so there is my first generation. Let me click the right arrow here. Here's the second. Let me click one more time, and here is the third. So I like everything down into here. This looks a little bit funny right here. So what I'll do now is I think I'm going to come in here with the lasso tool and go right around here, just lassoing all this area right there. And let's click Generative Fill again and click Generate and see what we get. Okay, not bad. That's the first result. Let's see what the second result looks like. Yeah, now look at that. That looks really good. That looks really natural. Let's look at the third result. That's not bad either, but I think I'm going to go with the second result. And then I have one more issue, and that's right around this area right here. So what I'm going to do is come and lasso around this area right here. And let's generate one more time. This time I'll use the TK Gen Fill Panel because I only have to click one button. So I'll click right here and we'll let it generate. Okay, so there's our first result. Now I can toggle through with the TK Gen Fill Panel right here. Here's the second result and here is the third result. So I think I like the third result. Now I'm pretty happy with the hair. Next I'm going to work with the Remove Tool. Now to work with the Remove Tool, I need to put a blank pixel layer above here or else stamp all these layers together. But I'm just going to click this button right here and put a blank pixel layer here. And then click on your Remove Tool. I believe the shortcut for that is J. Yeah, J is the shortcut. And see right here, I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. You can use your left and right bracket keys. Now I have mine set up for re Remove after each stroke and Sample All Layers. That's important if you're using a blank pixel layer. Make sure you have Sample All Layers checked on. And I'm just going to paint right across here. That looks a little funny right there. But see how that cleans it up? And maybe right here, there's a little dot right there. Yeah, and maybe this little flyaway hair here. I'm going to take that off. And maybe this hair right here. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe one more time right there. But take advantage of this remove tool. It is awesome. Then if you hold your space bar down, you could come and look at different areas here. Now, for the edges here that don't look quite right, I like to take this remove tool and just kind of run it along this edge like this and see what kind of a job. See how it cleans that right up rather nicely? And maybe right here does a great job. And then maybe down along this edge right here, I'm just going to drag it down to about here. I'm not going to go too crazy, getting too much at once. And then right down here and right here. But see how this can really clean up your edges really nice. Okay, even this little light coming through here, I might just paint across there, get rid of that. Okay, let's look on this side. Okay, now over here I have this, doesn't look real good. And this area looks a little funky here, so what I might do is just use the Remove tool and just kind of paint right like this, and even over this area right in here. See if I can fix this whole thing up. Yeah, and that looks really good. I'll paint right here. Yeah, look at that. And maybe I'll just paint across here once. Okay, so that's nice. Right here on this edge, I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. But take your time. I always say this in my videos because I'm making videos and I got to go really fast. But now let's look around the image. I'm holding down the space bar. Look, I missed the spot right here. Make the remove tool a little smaller with my left bracket key and just paint along this edge. But look how nicely this cleans that up. Isn't that good? 
that really does a great job. Everything's looking good. Look around the hair, see if there's anything I need to fix. This hair here looks a little funky. I'm going to paint over that. And by George, I think I've got it. I'm going to go ahead and fit this to the screen. I'm just going to use my uh, TK9 combo panel and click this button right here and fit the screen. Now, I need to mention something to you, and I told you this was a smart object. You can double-click on Raw Filter and go and change the blur and change the amount of grain, but you want to do all that before you start working with the hair and the edges of things. In other words, where I use Gen Fill on the hair and I use the Remove tool on the edges, Make sure you have that blur all corrected first before you start doing this, okay? That's very important. So get the blur and the grain set up properly and then start working on the edges because if you don't do that first, it'll mess your edges up and you don't want that. Well, let's go ahead and see a before and after. What I want to do is go to this background layer where I have this mask and I'll do a command or control J to copy that onto a new layer. And what I want to do is drag this up to the top of the layer stack. And then what I want to do is click on this mask and drag it down onto this trash can just to get rid of it. It says apply mask to layer before removing. And I'll just say delete. Okay, so now we can see this is where we started out right here. And if I shut this layer off, now you can see the blurred background. So pretty nice, right? So here is the before and here is the after. So there you go. You may want to go back and watch this video again. It's really not that hard, but I guarantee you with this technique, you'll get much more realistic blurring results than you will if you just use the new lens blur in either Lightroom or Camera Raw. So give this a try. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so you'll receive all notifications. And then the next time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.